Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dozier. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Puma Evo Speed 1.5 in the Trix colorway. Now, as you guys can see, it does come in a special box. This particular box, though, will be exclusive to this Trix colorway, so just keep that in mind. Future colorways will likely come in a regular red and white Puma box. Open it up, and on the inside, all you get are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. So we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly, and we'll take a closer look at a shoe that I am actually very, very excited about. Uh, the Evo Speed 1.5 obviously is the successor to the Evo Speed 1.4, a shoe that I really, really liked and felt was extremely underrated. When Puma launched their last Evo Speed lineup, a lot of the attention was on the SL model that was extremely light, but also was very controversial in the fact that it was only expected to last about 10 games, which was a pretty... Uh, I guess, accurate estimate. Now, there still is an SL model for the new Evo Speed lineup, and there will be a review on those uh, going up on my channel very, very shortly. But this is the standard Evo Speed 1.5 that doesn't have that super light, super thin upper. It does now have the SL sole plate and stud pattern, as you guys can see. And unlike the SL model, it is expected to last a decent amount of time, just like a regular pair of soccer shoes would. So durability isn't something that you should be too concerned about with this particular shoe. It should be on par with other lightweight, thin synthetic shoes currently out there. So in this video, we are of course going to take a closer look at the weight, given that this is in the speed boot category, if you will. We're gonna talk tech specs, performance features, um, take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet and essentially cover everything that you need to know about the new Evo Speed 1.5. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around, watch the entire video. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. Uh, and on that page, you will find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these up below their normal $195 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's talk about weight, which is one of the most exciting aspects of this new Evo Speed 1.5. They are extremely lightweight, both in hand as well as on feet, and we haven't really seen anything as light as this shoe since the early days of the F50 Addy Zero from 2010 until about 2012. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size 9.5 US. We're gonna throw them on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at an incredibly lightweight 5.3 ounces the equivalent of 151 grams. For comparison's sake, that's about a full ounce less than the Nike Mercurial Vapor 10, which is already extremely lightweight. And these are gonna hold up pretty much just as well. Like I mentioned, this is not like the SL variation. They should hold up a lot better. And given that you do have the SL bottom, that's really what's making for the significant weight decrease when compared to the Evo Speed 1.4, the previous model. So yes, the SL model is going to weigh less than the standard model um, of the Evo Speed 1.5, but it isn't going to be nearly as durable. So if you're looking for a thin, lightweight, tight fitting shoe, that's also gonna last a decent amount of time. You can treat it like a regular pair of soccer cleats. The Evo Speed 1.5, Again, if you're looking for something extremely lightweight, is definitely one of those shoes that should be on your radar. As far as performance is concerned, if you like thin, light soccer cleats, the Evo Speed 1.5 really does have it all. It has a high quality thin synthetic upper that's well reinforced, so the responsiveness is there. It's pretty comfortable considering how light it actually is. It offers a really nice flexible base and really, really aggressive traction. It has everything you could want from this style of shoe and it's lighter than pretty much everything else out there. So I know Puma is not the most popular brand. I know that the Evo Speed line isn't the most popular either. But again, if you're on the market for something thin and light, 
this is one of those shoes that you have to take a good hard look at. So as far as tech specs go, it does feature a microfiber upper that's been redesigned when coming from the Evo Speed 1.4, which I thought was really, really good. Now this does seem a little bit thicker and it does feel a little bit thicker as well, but the softness is still there. It feels for the most part, pretty similar to the Evo Speed 1.4, which is a good thing because I really, really like the feel of that upper and this feels pretty much the same, although the shape and the fit is a little bit different. Something we'll talk about later during the on feet portion of the video. Um, so as far as touch is concerned, it's definitely not gonna be as thin as something like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 10. You guys can see the side profile right there, uh, but it's still gonna provide that barefoot feel just with a very slight amount of thickness to it that kind of takes the edge off uh, when you make kind of contact with the ball, striking the ball especially. So if you don't necessarily want that super, super thin feel, but you still want something that's relatively thin, this is definitely going to uh, provide what you're looking for. Um, as far as the surface is concerned, it's finished off with a very, very light texturing that you probably can't even see on camera, but it's very, very minor, not really gonna have any kind of impact as far as touch on the ball is concerned. And then you can also see the slightly shiny parts, these little kind of uh, grippy elements, if you will. It's something that Puma has been implementing on the Evo Speed models for the last, the, the Evo Speed 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 pretty much all had it. Um, and again, it's not something that really has an impact on the overall performance of the shoe. You may notice it a little bit, but it's something that you stop noticing very quickly. Um, and it just kind of blends into the rest of the shoe. The upper does transition as well. So you can see the transition point is kind of in an odd spot. It's kind of right in the middle of the midfoot, um, straight up and down. It's almost a perfectly vertical line. And you have that on both the lateral and medial side. And from here, the upper transitions into a textile based synthetic. So it's a little bit thinner. Um, and again, not gonna impact touch in any way. If anything, it's gonna offer pretty much the same touch as the front part of the synthetic. They just made it a thinner material at the part of the shoe where it's not quite as important um, and they tried to shave as much weight as possible, which they've done successfully, given that the shoe weighs in at 5.3 ounces, which is pretty impressive. So you have obviously a fuse point there, fuse point there, and then another fuse point right here at the back of the heel. Laces run through the middle, as you guys can see, the tongue is the same thickness and the exact same synthetic as the rest of the upper, which I personally like to see just because it gives you a nice uniform touch across the entire foot. The upper itself is really well reinforced. It has a speed, speed frame support system. So I removed the laces on this one so you can see it. And on the inside, it basically has a another thin layer of microfiber with these little square cutouts that lines the entire inside of the shoe all the way in the toe box area as well. And that really does add a lot of structure to the upper. Um, not to say that it's flimsy, but that adds a lot of structure. So when you pull the laces tight, it really does grab your foot nicely and you put stress on the sides of the shoe when pushing off and making quick changes of direction. The upper is not overstretching; It's keeping your foot locked in place. And like I said, giving you that nice responsive feel without any kind of discomfort or any kind of specific pressure points. Just the entire upper has structure because the entire upper is has the entire support frame covering it. So like I said, as far as comfort is concerned, given how light this shoe is and it's tighter fit, it's actually above average. So uh, definitely something worth keeping in mind as well. If you don't want something that feels like it's squeezing your foot in any way, it does obviously have a lower cut at the heel as you would expect from this style of shoe. Um, not really any structure to this part of the upper, but that's fairly normal. Obviously it does have an external heel counter, something we'll get to in more detail in just a second. Uh, the heel liner is actually a nice uh, kind of dimpled synthetic material. So you basically have a synthetic leather and then it has these shiny, black little dimples that are slightly grippy as well. So it grips your socks quite nicely and prevents any kind of heel slippage. Uh, I really like that implementation of just kind of a grippier material here towards the back. And it is backed with some decent padding as well. So uh, general step in comfort really isn't an issue with this particular shoe. The insole is fully removable. It features a mesh liner on top. Perforations in part of the upper as you, in part of the actual insole as you guys can see. And it's a decent layer of this black foam material. And the quality is actually very good. It reminds me a lot um, actually of uh, the comfort insoles from Adidas when we used to get those, but um, really a good quality foam. And then as far as the outsole is concerned, it's basically the exact same SL sole plate and stud pattern that we saw on last year's Evo Speed 1.4 SL, which is the shoe that is only supposed to last 10 games. Now, given the different upper, this is going to be a lot more durable, like I mentioned, uh, but you're getting the lightweight benefit of this particular sole plate and stud pattern, which 
I will argue is better than what we got on the standard Evo Speed 1.4, as good as that was. So the sole plate itself is made from a PBAX material and it's very thin, so the flexibility is very good, especially in the forefoot area. Uh, the one thing that I will say as kind of a negative point with this particular sole plate, given how thin it actually is and given the length of the studs, which are pretty long for firm ground shoes, uh, if you play on harder ground, this probably isn't an ideal shoe. You will feel stud pressure, especially in the forefoot area, given the length of these studs. Um, and again, unless you're playing on nicer fields, probably not the best option. So if you play on hard ground, I would stay away from these altogether. You have their speed track system running through the middle that just basically reinforces the midfoot area, maintains some good stiffness through the sole plate. And as far as the stud pattern is concerned, it is extremely aggressive. You can see in the forefoot area, you have four conical studs closer towards the front of the shoe, one support stud in the middle, and then bladed studs at the base of the forefoot. Again, they're very long and fairly narrow in profile, so they dig into the ground quite nicely, and given the flexibility of the sole plate, it allows you to have as many studs under your feet as possible when you're moving at higher speeds and kind of twisting and turning. Really, really good stud pattern. The traction is very, very good. And then in the heel, it's kind of a unique layout in that you have two bladed studs on the lateral side and one single conical stud on the medial side. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the Pele Trinity, which had a similar layout to this. And just like the Pele Trinity, it feels more normal than you might expect just based on how it looks. Honestly, you don't really notice it when you're actually playing in the shoes. It doesn't feel unstable or anything like that. And again, it's something that you get used to very, very quickly and stop noticing altogether. So as far as traction is concerned, the performance you're gonna get from this particular sole plate and stud pattern is very, very good on firm natural grass plane surfaces. So that's pretty much it as far as tech specs go. Again, there is a lot happening here on this Evo Speed 1.5. It truly is a complete redesign coming from previous standard Evo Speed models. And again, if you're looking for something that is super light, offers really good traction, has a thin synthetic upper that's gonna provide a barefoot feel, and is also quite responsive, the Evo Speed 1.5 is one of those shoes that you definitely should be considering. As far as aesthetics go, this is the Trix variation of the Evo Speed 1.5. That also happens to be the launch colorway. Now, what Puma means by Trix, or when they have Trix in the name, is that both shoes are opposite of each other. So as you guys can see, the right foot is neon yellow with pink accents, and then of course black in the sole plate and heel area, whereas the left shoe is pink with neon yellow accents and then black in the heel and uh, sole plate area. So uh, interesting look. Uh, I know not everybody likes it. I'm personally not somebody who loves to wear the one-in-one -one shoe, uh, the one-in-one -one look, I guess. I prefer both my shoes to be the same color, I guess is what I'm getting at here. That's just my own personal preference and my own style, but I know a lot of people do like this kind of uh, one shoe, one color, one shoe, the other color look. Um, it's been very popular for Puma in the past, so I expect this to do pretty well for them, but let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. As far as the graphics themselves go and how future colorways of the Evo Speed 1.5 and Evo Speed line in general will be, I obviously would expect there to be regular colorways coming down the pipe where both shoes are the same color, if that's something that you're perhaps a little bit more interested in. Um, and I'm not sure about this graphic because uh, Puma is known to play around with different graphics on the shoe. So this little crisscross pattern that you see right here, I think it'll be on future colorways, but I can't say 100% for sure that it will be. Um, obviously on the lateral side, it does have the general look of a Puma shoe with the form stripe right here. This one's pink. This one's neon yellow. And then right here, kind of what we've seen on the Evo Speed line for the last couple of years, it actually does say Evo Speed right here, um, which I honestly don't think looks bad at all. Um, it, it's kind of cool. I, I don't mind the font that they use, which is, I, I guess, why I kind of like it. It says speed, speed frame right there when you look closely. Hopefully you guys can see that in the video. Um, and then basically the sole plate is solid black, but they even interchanged the actual branding there on the sole plate. You can see that the one Puma logo is pink, the other one is neon yellow. So they really paid attention to every little detail and made sure that these shoes were basically complete opposites of each other, which again, is kind of a cool look if that's something that you like. So let me know what you guys think about these down below in the comment section. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Evo Speed 1.5s on feet. 
On my left foot, I have the stock pink laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of black and neon yellow grid pattern SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they are, like I said earlier in the video, surprisingly comfortable given that they're basically only five ounces. The fit of the shoe is definitely different from the Evo Speed 1.4. Obviously, it has a different base, um, but I don't think it's anything that people aren't going to be uh, unhappy with. It fits a little bit more normal in comparison to previous Evo Speed models from Puma. Obviously, the Evo Speed line and Puma shoes in general have kind of been known for having that anatomical shape in the forefoot and toe box area where instead of having a perfectly rounded toe, it has kind of that point at the big toe and then kind of curves around like the actual shape of a foot. This is basically more of a rounded toe. Uh, I guess there's no other way to put it. So it feels pretty normal as far as the general shape and feel of the shoe is concerned. The synthetic material itself is nice and comfortable against your foot from right out of the box and will get more soft as you wear them in. So just keep that in mind. You may feel a slight stiffness at first, depending on what your tolerance is for that kind of thing. But for the most part, you shouldn't really have any issues with discomfort. Heel slippage is not an issue. It has a nice deep central lacing system so you can get the shoes nice and tight, um, kind of have that nice customized fit depending on how you like your shoes to feel once you do tie the laces up. And again, they feel nice and structured as well. I was a little bit worried about that fuse point, that transition point between the front half of the shoe and the back half of the shoe being right there in the midfoot um, in that kind of vertical pattern. But honestly, you don't feel that at all when you're wearing the shoes. And like I said, the comfort is well above average and better than what I was expecting given the actual weight of the shoe itself. Width wise, it is a tighter fitting shoe. Uh, but definitely not as narrow as something like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 10, for example. That's obviously partly due to this not being a, a one-piece upper like the Vapor 10, but it is still a tighter fitting shoe overall, especially in the toe box and forefoot area. So if you don't really like tight fitting shoes, maybe not the best option. And if you do have wider feet in general, again, probably not the best option, although they will be suitable for most people. As far as sizing is concerned, just like previous Evo Speed models and kind of Puma shoes in general, aside from the King line, they run about a half size small. So instead of wearing my usual size 9 US, I bumped it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, this is it for my review of the brand new Puma Evo Speed 1.5. If you guys are interested in more info, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the high quality images of this exact pair that I took myself. That'll give you a better idea as to how they actually do look in person. And of course, you'll also find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, we will be able to pick these up below their normal $195 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Evo Speed 1.5, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.